welcome to the second episode of Mythology. Today isn't really mythology, uh, but more like, how do I say it? Fiction? Because it contains spirits. Well, Sabuno, you clickbaited us. So, this is a story from Charles Dickens in 1843. Mm. Not the uh, haunted man in the bargain with the ghost. Uh, I believe that's one of his ones, but that's not what we're going to look today. We're going to be looking at uh, the tale of 1843, the, A Christmas Carol. Now, uh, let me tell you the story of A Christmas Carol and why Charles Dickens wrote it. To begin, we are introduced uh, to the cold streets of London uh, right after in the Industrial Revolution, where uh, Ebenezer Scrooge, two men sit working in their office. Ebenezer Scrooge is adamant uh, in the midst of his current uh, pastime, counting his money in terms of coins. It's innumerable, and if he loved it so much, it'd probably go on forever. Uh, then there's Bob Pratchett, single man who uh, can't, a man who can't even afford medicine for his tiny little uh, sickly son, and can't afford any food on the plate. Uh, working all day, all night as uh, Scrooge's clerk. And meanwhile, Scrooge is just counting coins in happiness. Uh, while they were still in the building, Bob well, asked for some warmth in the furnace. But this is the first time we get to see Ebenezer's greedy habit. As he responds well, with an uh, outburst of anger and uh, uh, throw, uh, saying, Why don't I throw all my money into the furnace fire? Uh, uh, Cratchit uh, keeps working in spite of fear as we see Scrooge walking outside of the building. Now, Scrooge uh, sees his nephew begging for them to come to the, uh, his Christmas party. Scrooge refuses until they both see a man uh, dressed in a um, uh, brown fur coat wearing a bowler hat with a feather on top. He asks uh, if you, he c could donate. He asks if Scrooge could donate to the poor children dying in the factories mm, with no food and no clean water. Uh, Scrooge did not give a care for any of the poor kids, uh, again showing how greedy he is and uh, still continues to refuse his nephew's party. He then walks off and lays in bed while sending Cratchit home to his family. Mm. Uh, until he is suddenly awakened by his uh, old business partner, uh, Jacob uh, Marley. And since Jacob Marley died seven years ago, uh, 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 Jacob Marley, I believe, was Scrooge's boss, uh, uh, it would be a very big overstatement to call anybody, even uh, his family, Scrooge's friend. Uh, I don't believe he had a family by now, but because it's not known of him having any children, uh, his nephew, Fred, is from his uh, sister who died in childbirth, Lucy, and he doesn't have any children that I know of. And at this age, his f of, of parents probably died. His mother died from the childbirth, and his fa father died of unknown causes. So, uh, I don't believe that Scrooge has any family at this point. So, uh, it would be a big overstatement to call anybody Scrooge's friend, even his deceased family. So, how do you do this? Well, how does he deal with this? And now, Jacob uh, Marley's spirit uh, from seven years ago, who had died, he appeared as a tra transparent ghost right in front of of Scrooge and how with disbelief in his eyes. Uh, 
Now, in his usual haircut, his usual dress, and his usual jeans, uh, Marley uh, floated over to the bed on which uh, Scrooge was uh, literally awake. Except this time, he was not very normal. As he looked ghostly, and he was smothered in locks, uh, chains, and weights. There were weights on his shoulders, chains around his neck and uh, chest, and there were locks all around his legs and arms. He was... Uh, Ebenezer, Scrooge, was both terrified and confused all, all at the same time. Uh, he, he looked at uh, Marley, who only uh, sa- said that... Uh, I believe Scrooge's chains are uh, about bigger than uh, his ones are right now, and that he needs to redeem himself, and hopefully the three spirits ahead will redeem him. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't want to voice over because one, there's a woman uh, in the story, and I'm too embarrassed, and two, uh, there's a lot of different voices, and I don't think I can voice them all. So... Now, there is, now, as Marley fades into the air, Scrooge is st- stood there in shock while he sees a woman uh, fade in with rose, roses on her head and a white robe. She uh, asks to hold Scrooge's hand. Scrooge refuses at first, but then learns that this is the ghost of Christmas past because he, as he introduces herself. Scrooge reluctantly lets out his hand, and they go to a childhood and his boarding school where all the other children are frisking around and playing with toys while he is an outcast sitting in, sitting in a corner and reading a book. Then we flash to his party, his first boss, Mr. Uh, Fessy had, I think, something. Uh, we flash uh, to that moment. I think Fezzi had or something was his first boss and uh, he was quite the businessman and screwed but he was also kind, cheerful and happy. Uh, some uh, Many traits that Scrooge uh, definitely didn't have and I even had in the stain. He disliked those. Uh, he uh, didn't even have any of those features. Uh, in fact, the uh, pure opposite. So, then, they flash back to the point at which um, Scrooge's ex-girlfriend, Belle, breaks up with him because uh, of her, ne- because she was neglected so much and uh, Scrooge became money drunk. Uh, then, they, uh, then, Scrooge begs to return to his bedroom. Uh, and his request is followed as the spirit is uh, speechless uh, and uh, she retur- teleports him home. The spirit is nowhere to be seen and, uh, when a second man uh, who w- wakes up uh, Scrooge with a thundering bolt uh, and a fur coat, a green fur coat, and a uh, very large brown beard stands up with the thundering roar. He uh, asks to take uh, uh, Scrooge's hand, but Scrooge says he's already been humiliated by his uh, past and that he did not want anything further. Anyways, uh, uh, the spirit says he is lucky to be of Christmas present. And, uh, and said how his actions have affected people now. Scrooge lets out his hand reluctantly once again. And he sees Bob, where he first uh, flies through the streets of London, where he uh, looks at Bob's house. Uh, 
Bob Pratchett's family is full of a fake smiles in the small feast, and that's all there is in the living room. In the bedroom, Bob himself is seen uh, housing his tiny little slim, uh, sickly son named Tim Cratchit. Uh, Scrooge refuses to believe this and says, surely there must be more in the kitchen. But um, the spirit um, counters that, saying that this is all they can afford with what they uh, what the salary you give them is. So he lays head, he looks at the bed in the very sickly tent, and um, then asks to uh, be returned home. I, uh, he then uh, looks at the party his uh, girl, uh, his ex girlfriend is having. Uh, and right, uh, realizes uh, how much he could have missed during uh, if he just uh, didn't get money hungry. Uh, then he uh, asks uh, to. He really begs to just be sent home, and the spirit agrees. Sending him home with the one snap of the finger, and he sees a uh, Scrooge, uh, not he, Scrooge sees a third spirit. This one did not reveal its face. It is in a black robe. The reaper-like uh, figure uh, reaches out one skeletal hand, and it is all uh, that is seen of him. He never speaks or talks. Now, <clears throat> assuming that this is the ghost of Christmas future, uh, Scrooge holds the uh, bony hand. He can f- feel the chill in his fingers. Mm. When suddenly, he uh, sees two men chattering uh, next to a gravestone uh, in a cemetery. Uh, saying ill things about some man uh, who uh, vanished for greed and ignorance, uh, who aimed for greed and ignorance. Realizing that this must uh, be him that they're talking ill about, he, uh, he laments to see how uh, utters uh, graves covered and uh, smothered with the roses, and his grave with nothing but his own name and dirt. Uh, it was even covered. Uh, to, it was even covered. There was nothing, no one mourning him, no one mo- lamenting him. Like he begged uh, uh, the um, mysterious black robe to uh, sponge his name off if he did the right thing. You know, the only thing the third spirit did was send him home. The next day, he was a changed man. He attended his nephew's uh, Christmas parties. Uh, all his grit and anger was rid from him. Uh, and he decided to pay Bob a greater salary. Oh, and he spent a more larger sector of his uh, money towards the poor. The end. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Oh, uh, no, actually, I just want to uh, show why Charles Dickens published uh, this b- book and uh, what message it gives us. So, Charles Dickens actually published this to uh, show his disliking for the children uh, in factories, starving, hungry, and uh, having to work for, uh, with labor to, uh, and earning not a single penny. So, he shows the greed. He embodies the greed of the people, uh, employers in the 19th century by using Ebenezer Scrooge and uh, portrays the changing, the actual like purifying as the three uh, spirits or four spirits, if you count uh, the spirit of Marley. So, this is a very good way, I think, of representing how greed can change a man for the worst and how uh, uh, very good people at heart can soon become bitter and almost never come back. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you next time.